Today we're going to talk about more confusing code terms. All right, so a lot of these, I'm gonna be honest, aren't confusing. The first couple videos that I did, if you haven't seen part one and part two of confusing code terms, uh, there are some terms that I covered that are really confusing to a lot of people when they start trying to get into this whole electrical code thing. Uh, a lot of the terms today, people have just been requesting that I do code terms. So some of these are confusing, some of them are not confusing, it's all relative anyways. Some of you may can be confused by things others may not be confused by, but, Either way, I'm gonna go through a whole bunch of different code terms today, just so that we have a little bit of idea what we're actually talking about. All right, the first term that we're gonna talk about is overcurrent protection, or you'll see it as overcurrent protection devices, or in forums or online, you might see it abbreviated as OCPD, overcurrent protection device, or protective device. It is a device that helps for overcurrent protection. Uh, overcurrent means too much current. So usually an overcurrent protection device is a breaker or a fuse. If there's too much current flowing in a circuit, we're going to disconnect that circuit. It's gonna sense how much current magnetically it's going to rip the, uh, the, the contacts inside of that magnet apart, or it might break the element inside of a fuse, but it is sensing too much current in an overcurrent situation, uh, and it is protecting the circuit that way. Next is going to be over voltage protection. So a very similar kind of thing, but very, very different. So over voltage protection is what we mean when we say surge protectors. Uh, surge protectors are not lightning protection. Lots of people think because a lot of the packaging and branding that they put little lightning bolts and that they say that like it'll help with lightning protection. It is not for lightning protection. Surge protectors protect against surges. There are surges that can happen because lightning hits nearby and, and it raises the potential of everything in the area, so it can create an overvoltage situation, but lightning striking a house at, at like 500,000 volts is not going to protect your electrical system if you have a surge protector on there. The surge protector will probably get fried, so will all of the other electronics. So just don't be fooled, that is not lightning protection. A lightning protection system is a completely different thing where they run a whole bunch of metal rods, they put you know a, basically a ground rod sticking up from the, from the roof, and then they ground everything and, and go down to earth with multiple other ground rods. Uh, a surge protector, a lot of times there's line surges that happen with the utility company, uh, so if they go to reconnect power in an area, it can send a huge overvoltage uh, through the entire system. So you might have that huge spike that happens in your electrical system. I have a video on surge protectors. You should check that out. Uh, lets you know a lot about what they actually are and what they're not. But surges can also happen from within a building. Uh, sometimes, you know, if you have your uh, air conditioning turn on or a furnace turn on or something like that. Any kind of appliances that turn on, there's a huge inrush of current and usually there's either a voltage spike or a voltage drop. So a surge protector just kind of cuts the tops and bottoms off. So the surge is still gonna hit your TV and all of your other things. It's just gonna be minimizing the amount that those surges are. That is over voltage protection. Next thing we have is a tamper resistant receptacle or a TR receptacle. Sometimes you'll see weather resistant, tamper resistant. Uh, so they'll say WRTR if you use those outdoors. So they're still tamper resistant, meaning that somebody can't go stick a piece of metal inside and shock themselves like children used to do. Uh, tamper resistant receptacles are required to be put pretty much everywhere that somebody could potentially go and try to stick something into a receptacle. They've got these little plastic flaps on the inside of them. And the only way to get the plastic flaps to fold in when you plug something in is to put equal pressure on both sides. Next term we have is a wireway. What is a wireway? A wireway is a way for wires. <laughs> A lot of conduits and tubing, uh, we also call raceways, are things that you can install conductors in. Uh, so we don't call conduit pipe. When we're talking in electrical circuits, pipe is for a pressurized water tube. It has water in it, under pressure, that is a pipe. So PVC pipe is the white PVC stuff that you see plumbers using. PVC conduit is what electricians use, uh, and it can be considered a raceway. Now, a wireway, more specifically, is usually a metal trough of sorts where you're putting kind of like a gutter. You know, you see gutters on electrical services. Those are actually considered auxiliary gutters by code. Those aren't gutters. An actual gutter is a wireway or a, a thing that has a long uh, shape. It can be routed into a bunch of different ways, kind of like a duct, essentially, and it has a removable cover on it. So you can have a whole bunch 
bunch of conductors in the inside. So if you look in Article 376, there is a thing for metal wireways and 378 for non-metallic wireways. So you can have wireways that are metal and wireways that are like, you know, PVC or plastic. You're not gonna find the definition in the beginning where all of the other definitions are of things that apply pretty much throughout all of code. Uh, you're gonna find the definition within the article and that's gonna happen a lot of places in code with a lot of these words. So the definition of a metal wireway is a sheet metal trough with hinged or removable covers for housing and protecting electrical wires and cable and in which conductors are laid in place after the raceway has been installed as a complete system. So plastic, pretty much the same thing. Non-metallic is a flame retardant non-metallic trough with removable covers and housing to protect electrical wires and cables in which conductors are laid in place after the raceway has been installed as a complete system. So same thing, just one of them's metal, one of them's not. All right, now the next three things that we're gonna talk about all kind of go together. We're gonna talk about appliances, equipment, and devices. So a lot of times people will call something an appliance, but it's not actually an appliance, it's a device, or they'll say this, uh, it, equipment is blah, 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 blah. Well, is equipment an appliance or are appliances only specific things? And what is considered a device? Is it just a receptacle or is it something that's electric? You know, so we have to kind of parse through those. So the first one that we're gonna look at is equipment. Equipment by code is a general term, including fittings, devices, appliances, luminaires, apparatus, machinery, and the like used as a part of or in connection with an electrical installation. So they're calling equipment anything tied to an electrical system, all the couplings, all the connectors, you know, pretty much anything, that's a general term. So you could say the service equipment, and when you say the service equipment, you could just be talking about the panel, or you could be talking about the main breaker inside the panel, or you could be talking about the couplings and fittings and nipples and everything that go on it, or you could be talking about the entire service itself, all of the stuff, it's the service equipment. Um, so equipment is a general large term, but it also means appliances. They include devices and appliances within equipment. So even just receptacles on a wall, it's technically equipment. Um, now, what is an appliance then? An appliance, it is utilization equipment, generally other than industrial, that is normally built in standardized types and sizes and is installed or connected as a unit to perform one or more functions such as clothes washing, air conditioning, food mixing, deep frying, and so forth. So an appliance is generally something that's manufactured, right? Like a refrigerator is manufactured, it's got a cord on it. You buy it, you bring it in, you plug it in. It's not part of the uh, premises wiring system. It's something you bring in and plug into the premises wiring system. Um, and is usually a pre-manufactured kind of thing. So an appliance, I mean, that could be a toaster, that could be a microwave, that could almost be a vacuum cleaner. I mean, really, anything that's manufactured, made in mul multiple sizes, and it's utilization equipment. So it's some kind of equipment that you're utilizing to do a thing with. Could be argued that utilization equipment's still a toaster. Somebody might be able to take their toaster out, put it in, take it back out. Some people leave their toasters in place. So would you call it an appliance or would you call it utilization equipment? Who cares? Why are you watching this video right now? This is stupid. Uh, then lastly, we have device. So how does it delineate the difference between a device and appliance or utilization equipment. A device is a unit of an electrical system. So now we're talking about things that are on the premises wiring system, not things that get plugged into it or hooked up to it. Uh, it's other than a conductor, so you don't consider conductors devices, and that carries or controls electric energy as its principal function. So it doesn't only mean it's receptacles or switches, but it does mean it's something that as its principal function has current flowing through it. It carries that current and does some kind of function. So receptacles or devices, uh, anything that I would you know say is like hardwired into something could be considered a device, but it could also be considered an appliance, could also be considered equipment. There's code for you, confusing as hell. Love you crazy people, see you in the next one. Best can't use it and video.